Haunting, haunting tones, Mr. Dave. Indeed. Welcome back, people, to another episode of Anderson's TV. I am joined again by the highly talented Dave Simpson. Uh, whilst we try to put together affordable pedal rigs yeah. to get you to sound like some of the most iconic guitar players in the world. And who are we doing today, Mr. Dave? We are after the tone of legendary Mr. Peter Green. It's not possible. No, cannot it's not. be done. It no. cannot be done. Video <laughs> over. Um, <laughs> Peter Green, you got you got any good Peter Green anecdotes? Uh, yeah, I've had a few. I mean, ridiculous amounts. I'm not going to go too crazy. I bet I've got a better one. You got it. That was uh, my dad and Peter Green went to school together, and my dad's first band was with Peter Green in it. That's my clang. Yep, that's I never, cool. I never met, I never met Peter Green, and my dad lost touch with him after they left school. So ah. there's no, I don't have any more. A stuff that's but really yes. cool yeah uh but you tell us some of uh, yours peter green to me is the uh to me is the quintessential british blues guitarist he had the right tone he could he had the voice he had the way of play. He, he he is the master of whisper to a scream like literally like uh he'll do things like uh hang on a minute give me a sec like where um nope where are we I don't know. It's gone off. Oh no, there we go. I'll turn the wrong one on. But he'll do that thing where he kind of he'll play. And then the next minute is. And he could do that loud, quiet, loud, quiet thing so perfectly. He's just and he had that tone, which I absolutely adore, that British blues tone, and it's just like where, where was he in the, in the timeline of British bluesers then? Uh, well, he, he joined uh, the Blues Breakers after Eric Clapton. When Eric Clapton right. kind of like uh, kind of left, well, Eric, Eric left twice. The first time he left, he went off on this kind of like jolly with some friends. And Peter, <laughs> Peter, very, being very very sure of himself, constantly said to John Mel, "I can play better than him." And uh, so. Uh, uh, John Mel got Peter in, and then Eric Clapton came back. So Eric Clapton got his job back. Peter Green went away, and then Eric Clapton left for the final time, and Peter got the job. So John Mel did the Hard Road album with Peter Green, right? And that's just like his tone on the Hard Road album is just like ah, it's just disgustingly gorgeous. And then um, for for Peter's birthday, John Mel got him studio time, and funny enough, at that point in time, the Blues Breakers were. John, uh, John Mayle, Peter Green, uh, John McVie, and Mick Fleetwood. Oh, and wow. So he was like, oh, well, he says, I've booked a studio for you, go in and do something. So they went in and recorded a couple of blues tracks just as a free piece. And uh, the, guy, the guy in there says, what do you want to call it? And Peter Green goes, I'll well, call it Fleetwood Mac because uh, of John Mick. And he was always very, like, he never wanted any attention. He was yeah. never one who like, look at me, look at me, I'm a rock star. Peter wasn't. He was always very withdrawn and pulled back. And I think uh, eventually that was kind of like a thing that kind of unraveled him. That and the drug incident in, in Munich. But um, but yeah, it, it, it's he's just that. <sighs> we didn't have him long enough, if that, if that kind of thing. It, it, by 72 done yeah it's over and that was that really I mean, there was that kind of short-lived thing of the splinter group later on but it there, wasn't was, a, there was a lot of stories of him being taken advantage of weren't there yeah stuff in his sort yeah of later life and anyway he's no longer with us so mm. god rest his soul and everything mm. but I, a nice fitting tribute to him there Dave. I, I do agree he's uh, for touch and tone it's ridiculous anyway mm. so peter green is another one of these guitar players that really um got his tone from turning an amp up really loud, mm -hmm. using all the dynamics in his fingers and his guitar. And I think was probably one of those sort of, um, he used reverb yes. very effectively, didn't he? To Definitely. sort of create yeah. haunting tones. Mm -hmm. So we're really, all that tone, by the way, you heard in the, in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I've explained again this. If you're yeah. watching Dave and I doing this 
sort of little series for the first time. Um, the purpose is to try and get some affordable pedals to help you try and sound like, you know, various iconic guitar players. But we're always using an affordable guitar amplifier and an affordable guitar. And to a certain extent, it doesn't really matter to a degree what we use. We, we, we try with the guitar to mm. just be in the right ballpark with, you know, having humbuckers rather than single coils if that's what's needed, all that sort of stuff. And the amp, we don't really care. As long as it's yeah. just got a basic, nice, clean tone, we're going to try and do everything else with the pedals. So in this instance, we've gone with the Orange Super Crush, which is actually one of the best solid state amplifiers money can buy and has a really nice internal reverb and an mm. internal kind of valve-esque gain structure. So what we thought we'd do for the very first bit was actually just use the amp. So it's like a crank yeah. tone, but with the master volume turned down and loads of reverb. Mr. Dave, would you please now reset the amplifier to just sound like any old other boring, yep. clean guitar sound? Perfect. Yep. You should be able to get roughly that kind of tone out of any guitar amplifier that you've got. Um, and we're going to, first of all, find a reverb pedal to give us that giganto Marks and Spencers kind of reverb. Mm. Um, and then more, with much more difficult and yes. much less idea about where we're going to go, I'm going to try and find a distortion pedal or a fuzz or overdrive mm -hmm. pedal or whatever that emulates that cranked to yeah. the Jahibas um, old valve amplifier. Mm. Three reverbs, uh, a couple of really affordable ones and then a slightly less affordable but still kind of affordable pedal. So um, they're all, these two are around about the 50 mark and then this one's just under 100 I think. So. Um, in no particular order. Oh, and we are not using effects loops. We're going yep. in the front end of an amplifier. You kind of, if you have an effects loop, you could chain it up like that if you wanted to. If you have great reverb on your amp, you could you could do that. But we're assuming you don't. Yes. Uh, so here is the tone, the TC Electronic Sky Surfer. Yep. Take us away, Mr. Dave. <laughs> Uh, more, more, more reverb. Okay, Definitely so more. Uh, typically speaking, on um, really simple reverb pedals, a bit like an mm. amplifier, you might just have one knob. You know how much reverb you want. Uh, but typically speaking, what we would get is on the, the the Sky Surfer, we've got how much reverb do you want, how much mix between the dry and the and the mm. wet single signal do you want there to be, tone control for the reverb, and actually on this one we've got three different types of reverb. Uh, the JHS one, we have got how much reverb do you want, the tone of the reverb, and the decay. So reverb, I think, on this would be like the mix control and yeah. the decay. Decay, decay? Uh, would be um, how long does the reverb go on for. Um, so you want a little bit more. I'm conscious yeah. of the fact that when you're going into the front end of an amplifier, it's very easy to overwhelm the signal with yeah. too much reverb. But here we go, we'll try. I don't think we need to be kind of any more than that. I think that's about right. Here we go. This isn't just any YouTube channel. <laughs> anyway, that's the Sky Surf. <laughs> just in case you want to hear. Um, I love that. A spring reverb is designed to do the uh, spring reverb that would be in an amp. A plate reverb was more of a studio kind of reverb. And a hall reverb is just an emulation of what it would be like to be in a big hall. I'll flick through them so you can hear. So this is the spring. Here's the plate. And here's the hall. You just choose to taste, whatever you like the best. Uh, the tiny spring is the simplest one of the three. Here we go. Here's without. Oh, it's just so bad, <laughs> so dry. It's like a water biscuit without even butter on it. It's got a little bit of shimmer on it. Hey, it's got something. There's like it's like almost like chorusing, almost like a. I really, I love the 
musicality of that, even though it's very yeah. simple. Let me just quick. It is, there's something else there, isn't there? like a little splash of distortion mm. and shimmer and mod. I don't know, I like that. Mm. Do you know what we call oh, these sorry. kind of, you get these kinds of delays and reverb pedals that are either very straight, you know, they don't really alter the tone, they mm. just add the, 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 the effect. And then you get these other kinds of versions of those called, I think Mick and Dan from that pedal show called them character mm. pedals. So it adds the reverb and the delay, but it also adds a sort of a, like an extra bit of character. Yes. I would yeah, almost yeah, yeah. describe that a bit like that. Oh, I need to plug this one in, otherwise it won't work. Um, I remember the first time. <laughs> That's, very... I like that one a lot. Yeah. I like what, the what tail. Say, I interrupted. It's, it's very, very what? spacey. Very like, there's spacey. a lot. It creates like a lot. Kevin, big. Um, yeah. <laughs> try this. Let's just run through them. See where we go. Okay. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> I mean, I think we can all agree that uh, any one of these three makes the dry sound on this amplifier better. And yep. if you have an amplifier with no reverb on it, get a reverb pedal. Um, Dave, it's, you know, you're in the hot seat. You're, I know. Which one? I'm kind of torn between, uh, I do like a tiny spring, but that kind of shimmery thing, I, I, it sounds really nice. It's not quite where I'm, where we kind of let's go for the Peter thing, but the Sky Surfer and the JHS one, are really nice, but I can't decide between those two. It's, it's becoming a bit of a... It's, it's odd you say that, because my two favourites are these two. I have a tiny spray, I, yeah. I like the warmth and sort of musicalness mm. that comes on sort of almost in the background. Yeah. The Sky Surfer, I'm I'm struggling with this mix control. I think, it, I think this would be better through an effects loop. Yeah. Because I'm struggling. It's literally just like not quite enough to too much and mm. it, and I think through an effects loop you'd get more of a blend of the dry signal coming through it would be easier to manage but mm. so I think on that basis should we just go with this one then seeing as that's yeah. the one that we both agree yeah. sounds I, great. Again I, li I like the space that that that, that mm. creates like on those flute with Mac like blues recordings you're even live when his reverb's there it's, it does that really weird thing that spring reverb does as well it's like when he's f flat out the reverb's there but it almost is inaudible and then when he turns the volume down it comes back in it's very strange do you like the clang of a spring reverb as I well i do yeah you i like do. that kind of drippy sp splishy yeah. splashy thing yeah anyway look technical terms we could go deep on reverbs and often mm -hmm. do um but let's just choose yeah, this one for now yes. yeah uh right um there's almost no point making you a board on the floor no, because, there isn't that. Cheers, there, no. Because basically, <laughs> um, we're only going to have two pedals in it. So yes. I think we'll leave this plugged in and sort of over here somewhere, uh -huh. and then we'll just plug the drive wheels. Now this is this next bit. This is going to be I, difficult. I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, you're talking about you know blues breaker era. You're talking about players using you know I like Clapton using tone benders and mm. Les Pauls and Marshall amplifiers and. But I don't ever really get the sense that was Peter's sound. No, I mean, uh, he was, well, when he was in the Blues Breakers, he used a JTM 45 mm. more than anything. And he didn't use the Blues Breaker combo that Eric did. He used a, a JTM 45. But when uh, Fleetwood Max died, he, used, he went to Orange yeah. uh, and later to Fender. 
um, bought that orange tank. He had a, an orange, oh, I forget the name of it now, but he had an orange head and an orange reverb tank and basically just gunned it. And there's a great picture actually of um, Flute of Mac playing with BB King. Mm. And BB uh, King's going into the same amp as uh, right. P Peter Green. And he, I think Peter's just smiling because BB's playing through his amp and it's just like, this is BB King right there. And he's, he's just like absolutely loving it. So it's really cool. My gut feeling is we're going to very, very quickly just go no, no. to a lot of these drive <laughs> pedals. But let's see. So let's get our... Yeah. I do like that really well. Yeah. That's kind of That's like no, a isn't it? It's just an immediate no, I think. Yeah. Well, I quite like the sound in a weird kind of way, but it's not. It's not. No, no, no it's, uh, it's not that, that was a bad starter. I apologise. Um, I'm not even sure why I've got so many fuzz pedals here. I kind of think it's because at the time that was the only kind of drive it's pedals that there was, were. Yeah. But I think yeah. I, I, I think thinking, we're going more overdrive, aren't yeah, we? To sort of try and find like a driven amp rather than a fuzz. But we'll mm. see. We'll try another couple fuzz pedals. See if anything stands out. Mm. That's closer than the first one. It is. I quite like it. Uh, still, it's still, still too fuzzy. Compressing too yeah. much. And There's a lot more kind of uh, kind of bright clarity to Peter's Peter's tone. That's kind of like not. Yeah, not that's quite. too fuzzy. Isn't yeah. It? I mean, that can go in the, it wasn't bad pile. Mm, yeah. Um, I think I'm going to try one reject. more, I'm going to try one more fuzzy kind of pedal and then might steer away from fuzzes and just look at overdrives mm. and see what we can do. We may never find a convincing Peter Green mm. drive tone. In all fact, it, it's, it's the tone that I've been searching for the longest. Right. Like, uh, um, I've tried and tried and tried and tried. Mm. And to get the dynamics that he had, and even even when diming an amp, it's like, how the hell is he doing this? Well, we should also know. mention that what we've not got here is a Les Paul with that sort of um, the out -phase. mythical out of phase mm. neck pickup. This is just a normal wired oh. uh, guitar, but oh, oh dear. that's a uh... yeah. Nowhere yeah. near, nowhere near. That's a totally, totally different kind of fuzz. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going blues driver. Yeah. I'm going blues driver. Ye old reliable. One of the most underrated boss pedals of all time. Great sounding pedal. Immediately, it's yeah. more the overdriven amp tone, isn't Definitely. it? Got all the dynamics Has as it? well. Yeah, yeah well, you can. You don't even have to touch your volume. You can just go. Kind of... Mm -hmm. A bit more uh, gain on it. Just like not a great deal, but it's maybe about twelve o'clockish, maybe. Twelve o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. A uh, bit, bit, but yes. that's actually yeah, too. Much. Yeah, somewhere around there. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's pretty convincing. It's not bad, is it's it? Not I mean, bad so at we're all. definitely in the world of overdrive. So mm -hmm. I'm going to give up with. I've got some fuzzes here, but I just I'm not even going to bother going there. Blues driver is currently in the box seat. Indeed. Um, do you want to hear another Peter Green anecdote? Yes, always. It's, it's not really a Peter Green anecdote, but I. Um, interviewed Steve Vai recently, oh, yes. Clang, uh, who has a track on his new album coming out on the 28th of January, so not out yet, but out soon, called Greenish Blues. Uh, 
Oh, and I sort of said, so what was the, uh, you know, I didn't realise you were like Peter Green fan. And he's sort of this huge, humongous sigh. <laughs> just like, I so wish I hadn't called this song Greenish Blues. <laughs> as he told me for the 30th time that day that it was nothing to do with Peter Green. And it was just his favourite colour. I was, um, was going to say, did he so, rip off my song? So <laughs> have you done a song called... I've got a song called The Green Blues. Well, perhaps it was. Which was for Peter. I should have known. <laughs> nothing to do with Peter Green. And uh, had I paid more attention while listening, I'd have known it sounded, it was nothing to do with Peter Green. Frank Tuppy kind of gets. There's a thing that the original Marshall Blues Breaker pedals <laughs> didn't really do much until you were cranking it. Yeah. But I, so I don't know if there's. Dynamics still, or um, not really? Not, not, not in the much. same way in the. No, the blues drive is still uh, king here. I'm inclined to agree with you, Mr. Dave. Mm. Um, I mean, if you guys have got other things to do, feel free to, you know, nip out, make yourself a <laughs> cup of tea or whatever. We're just going through a load of pedals here. Uh, here's a super cheap pedal, um, which is just a basic overdrive pedal. Let's see what this sounds like. It's not bad. We've got a, a bit more gain to it. It hasn't, though. again, it hasn't got... That's it. The blues driver seems to do this really like... You've got everything if you want yeah. it, whereas all these others are sort of a bit more in a boxed yeah. in sort of tone. Yeah, there's a, I mean, there's plenty more gain if you want to just... Yeah, can we just... I'm going to have a look around in my Mary Poppins bag here. <laughs> oh, you can yeah. recommend that if you want to, Oswald, though, but I think you might have to go and get one, I'm afraid. Okay, we're moving on. As you may see here, the pedal has, uh, the table, sorry, has just multiplied in the terms of number of pedals. So we've got some moors and a couple more tone cities and uh, electroharmonics and, a, and a, a TC Mojo Mojo, which actually I'm going to go, this yeah. is, uh, this was Oz's suggestion. I might be wrong. Uh, so we'll see now. <laughs> we can all judge Oz's uh, Peter Green <laughs> knowledge. Does it sound anything like it or nothing? Um... <laughs> Confuse me there. Okay, Mojo, Mojo, baby. Still, so we still think Blues Driver's in the lead. Oh, yeah? definitely, yeah. Okay. It's kind of compressing. It is. It's. It it, can't, it does remind me of Eric. It, it kind of reminds me of Eric Clapton's tone more I, than. I, I've Peter got to go back with, like. to just remind myself of mm. do I like the blue? I think I still like the blues driver the best. Yeah. Um, a little bit fuzzy, maybe the mojo mm. mojo. It, that, that's it's got all that. Clarity. Yeah. Okay. Blues driver still number one. Mm -hmm. um, but Oz, you get a notable pass there as it sounded okay, I think. Um, Thanks, Lee. You're welcome. <laughs> I have no, no, aspira no, no idea if this is going to sound good or not for this tone, but I like this drive pedal. Like, this is straight off of my own mini board. Oh, Ooh, nice. Psh, that's, that's, that's an effect in its own. Yeah. That's cool, I like that. Boss has just got this top end yeah. that's just none of the other ones are doing yet. No, and that, that's, that's the kind of thing is with Peter's tone, like especially when he was full out, kind of it's mm. very, very bright and it kicks. It's like it's a bit too high gain. I mean, yeah, uh, they're all, the... none of them are just, it's, it's not treble no. as such, it's high frequency. It's just, yeah. it's a. I'm putting the glove on. Be careful. 
going in. By veterinary glove. <laughs> um, that's pretty good. That's close. A bit more gain, maybe that's about close. ten o'clock-ish. Uh, Quite like that, that. I, that may make it mm. into some sort of final shootout. Um, this is not the best way to demonstrate. Uh, no, not to demonstrate. It's a good way to demonstrate. It's not the best way for you to decide what pedals you like. I would spend a little longer with pedals. If you go to a music shop, don't just plug one in and three seconds nope. later go, I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> We've got no volume ah, on that that's one. Because... Oh, there. <laughs> Nice, it kind of it's got interacts. The, it's got the treble again. Yeah, I like. and it interacts with that reverb. It? Oh, I like okay. that. Yeah. That's nice. That has made. That has also made it mm. into our final. Uh, fi well, it might be more than the final three. Let's mm. see. Durple, Pete's signature. Well, Pete's sort of collaboration pedal. That's really cool. I was going to say that for me didn't have that had that high frequency missing, mm. but we'll you know because it's Pete's and it'll get stroppy if we don't include it. We'll <laughs> just let it go through. We'll have a four-way shootout at the end. Come on, Moore. Yeah. Have you ever had blues crabs before, Dave? Not yet. Excellent. About to. Uh, I, I, I think it's in the it's ballpark bad, as yeah. well. And actually, we tried the blues man already, didn't we? Didn't we, we? Did I think we, we did. Yes, yeah. we so did, yeah. this is the last one. So, yeah, cool. Uh, okay, well, for right. me, it we're, was... go, we're, we're doing we're doing the shootout. We're going yeah. to literally five way shootout here. Okay, this is it. Our final challenge, uh, Mr. Dave. Please mm -hmm. play a relentless Peter Green style as I switch through these five, and then okay. we'll pick a winner. Uh. It's that style that you're about to start playing that for me... Yeah, that, that, that goes for it. But to me... It's, they all sound the same. <laughs> it, to me, it's between the Blues Driver and the Sweet Cream, but I really like the way the Sweet Cream uh, plays with it, and it feels great as Yay well. for the Sweet Cream! Mm. Okay, here we go. Let's do, let's do Marks and Spencer's music for okay. a minute.
It's a sweet cream for me. I think it bloody is, isn't it? It really goes. It's great. That. I say nailed. I mean, it's got obviously you, yeah. it's not nailed, nailed because <laughs> we haven't got Peter Green's rig or his fingers. Mm. But honestly, through a solid state amplifier, that pedal and that pedal are amazing. That is wicked. a great sound. I love it. And let, let's just remind you play it again. Yeah. Oh, where's my volume go? <laughs> so, not Peter Green. <laughs> oh, there we go. Well, look, I'm pleased about that. We got yeah. there in the end. Mm. Um, so there you go, guys. Uh, cool. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Dave, for coming down. Thank you very much. Thank um, you for having me. If there was anything that uh, we used at some point in this video, you should find the link for it below if you're interested in it. But yes, yeah, sweet cream, congratulations. I think that's $39.99. Yeah. I can't remember how much the JHS reverb is, but I'm pretty sure it's change out of £100. Um, so there you go. Mm -hmm. Thank awesome. you very much. Uh, and yes, we shall see you in another video soon. Mm. Au revoir.